And here we go again, back to our history reactions. This is all about World War II, or specifically about a certain Japanese person who would not concede that the war was over. He didn't get the text message. He didn't get the text message, Kev, <laughs> all the facts. This is actually this is from Simple History Channel, and it's mm. called the World War II Japanese soldier who didn't surrender until 1974. And that's Ooh. actually quite impressive. So that's nearly 30 years after the war ended. Yeah, he obviously was just sort of... Yeah, in right? denial. In denial, and A obviously bit. weren't going around killing many people. Maybe he was lost. <laughs> See, I was lost growing up... Uh, yes, I was growing up, Kevin, one, once upon a time. Many you a were moon, growing up. And I heard about this story story about there was someone from Japan or whatever that was like in the jungle and he didn't realise that the war was over so if this is the same person then uh, that's, oh, that's my apologies my apologies yeah. sincerely but um, yeah other than that mm. I think we need to take a look so let's go for it this video is brought to you by Skillshare Hiro Onoda the Japanese soldier who didn't surrender until 1974 Hiro Onoda was a Japanese intelligence officer in the Imperial Japanese Army who refused to surrender until decades after World War II had ended. In the Pacific Theater, there were many Japanese holdouts holding Zanryu Nipponhe, or remaining Japanese soldiers. They were motivated to continue on after the surrender of Japan in August 1945 a whole load because of their yeah. dogmatic, militaristic indoctrination or simply because they were unaware of the surrender. Hiro Onoda was trained at the Nakano School as an intelligence officer where he was taught guerrilla warfare and intelligence gathering. Onoda was sent to Lubang Island near Luzon in the Philippines in late 1944, where he would soon meet up with a group of other Japanese soldiers already on the island. Mijiyoshimi Taniguchi had given him orders to live off the land and forbade him to die by his own hand. He would <laughs> further reassure right. Officer Onoda by saying, it may take three years, it may take five, but whatever happens, we'll come back for you. Until then, so long as you have one soldier, you are to continue to lead them. <laughs> oh, right. Higher ranked mm. officers in the group made Onoda unable to carry out his mission to sabotage the enemy airstrip and pier at the harbor. This in turn made the US conquest of the island, which was achieved in February 1945, easy. Once US forces were on the island, the large group split up into smaller groups of three to four men and escaped oh. into the jungle and were either picked off by the US troops or surrendered until it was just Hiro Onoda and three others under his command which were left active. Private Yuichi Akatsu, Corporal Shoichi Shimada, and Private First Class Kinshichi Kozuka, all of which had set up base in the mountains. After Japan had formally surrendered in September 1945, Onoda and his group came across a number of leaflets. The first leaflet left behind by locals was discovered quite soon, reading, the war ended on August 15th, come down from the oh, mountain. Sorry, did know. However, they concluded probably, that it was an Allied yeah. propaganda trick. Ah, After this conclusion, guess. the group continued to raid local islanders for food and other resources. Right. General Tomoyuki Yamashita of the 14th Area Army also dropped leaflets from the air with a surrender order. But again, the group decided that they were a trick. <laughs> with a lack of knowledge of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it may have seemed more unlikely that Japan was willing to surrender. In 1949, Yuichi Akatsu escaped from the group and surrendered to Filipino forces in 1950, causing the remaining three to be cautious to disloyalty. In 1952, the search <laughs> mission was expanded with letters and pictures from the group's families dropped from an aircraft, but again, this was wrote right. off as a trick by the three soldiers. Every piece of evidence the group came across increased their paranoia and hostilities. While they were dressed in their imperial Japanese uniforms, the people they came across were in civilian clothing, which they interpreted as allied soldiers in disguise oh. with the strategy of luring them out. As a result, they didn't think twice when firing on the locals. Oh. Corporal Shoichi Shimada was shot in the leg but recovered with the help of Onoda in 1953. But on May 7, 1954, he was killed by a search party when he fired upon his potential rescuers who returned fire on a beach at Gonten. Now just two remained. Onoda and Kozuka would continue the mission to sabotage, gather intelligence on, and attack the enemy which no longer existed. Mm. But on October 19, 1972, during a skirmish, Kozuka was shot and killed by the police. There's a long big jump there, Lieutenant aren't there? Gap in the middle. Onoda yeah. was now alone. On February 20, 1974, a determined Japanese explorer called Norio Suzuki found Onoda. Onoda still refused to surrender, 
However, Suzuki had the idea to locate his original commanding officer, Major Yoshimi Tanaguchi. In March 1974, his former commanding officer, Major Yoshimi Tamaguchi, traveled to the Philippines to fulfill his promise to return and end his orders in person. Onoda, still wearing his tattered army uniform from decades ago, saluted the Japanese flag and handed over his samurai sword, his functioning Arasaka Type 99 rifle, several rounds of ammunition, hand grenades, and his family dagger. The Philippine government under President Ferdinand Marcos granted him a pardon, taking into consideration that although he had killed 30 innocent people during his campaign on the island, he thought the war was still carrying on. When he returned to Japan, Onoda was very popular, but he found it hard to adjust to the new post-war Japan oh, yeah, so and its traditional like, oh, yeah. values. He published an autobiography and in 1975 left Japan for Brazil, where he raised cattle and later opened a series of training schools. In his last years, Hiro Onoda said in an interview, Every Japanese soldier was prepared for death, but as an intelligence officer, I was ordered to conduct guerrilla warfare and not to die. I became an officer and I received an order. If I could not carry it out, I would feel shame. I am very competitive. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly is. This video was made oh, possible oh, 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 by... Oh, oh, what a story! Ooh, Do you know yeah. what? A lot of people would be, like, thinking the obvious, say, they think, I hear a story about a Japanese man who would not actually uh, surrender, you know, 20, 30 years after mm. war. He must be a, f a bit foot-loopy. <laughs> no. But he'd actually be forgiven then and thinking, look, good on him, He was actually. One, one of the most dedicated soldiers ever. Not just him as well, the, the, the group. I mean, because well, some of them yeah. didn't actually die until not long before he surrendered no. as well, so... And to be fair, he was just following orders absolutely to the letter, wasn't he? So, you know, if I don't come back and say it's ended, just carry on doing it. And that's what he did. I see that in a completely different light now. I apologise yeah. mm. to you the, the family, see. the nation. I'm like, yeah. I, always, I always heard of that and thought, oh, he must have been real fruit loop. Like, but no, <laughs> he was just purely doing his orders. I, I am surprised that, like, after maybe four years and maybe killing a few locals that, the soldiers didn't go in there and either capture him or, or there take is that him out. In there. Why didn't they get like that? I, I can't remember the names of these people, but the general person who then actually gave him the order and said, like, you must stay out there mm. and um, you, know, you stay with your comrades there until the final day. So, but yeah. why didn't they get him out there earlier? Yeah. Why did it take 29 odd so years? They, they flew airplanes over dropping leaflets and didn't think to send him out. Well, they did 28, 29 yeah, years later. That's, that's a long time. Why not do it like a year or two after that? I assumed mm. actually that he'd already passed away and that's why they couldn't get But then they said, oh, we finally got him out there and said, no, yeah, yeah. it's over. Yeah. I'm a little bit shocked, I must admit, mm. in a good way. Yeah, that's definitely very interesting. That was, let us know what you thought of the, uh, this Japanese chap yeah. and his comrades in the comments below. And as, are you as like, um, Surprised as I am, or as we are, because yeah, I didn't show him getting any medals or anything. I mean, I'm really, he, he stuck to the. He became a national hero because of it, and rightly so, in yeah. a funny kind of way. Yeah, in a peculiar way. So, yeah, no. definitely. Um, yeah, other than that, a big thank you for joining us. Somewhere. See you all soon. Catch you on the flip side.